Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Thursday evening. We're now tracking the final approach of Hurricane Florence to the North Carolina coastline. Outer bands have come ashore during the course of the day today, and winds have gradually increased. Wind gusts over 40 to 50 miles per hour have occurred in portions of eastern North Carolina, and gusts over 60 or even 70 miles per hour have occurred at some stations in the outer banks, and these will likely continue to increase as we head into the overnight hours. We do have outer uh, core bands with stronger winds beginning to approach Cape Lookout in places like Moorhead city where conditions will deteriorate as the storm gets closer. Do realize though that even if you don't have very strong uh, winds from the outer bands here in eastern North Carolina, uh, they can spawn tornadoes, these outer bands, and we have had some warnings already. There's a watch out for eastern North Carolina as uh, some of these cells that you see coming ashore in little kinks in the band, these can encounter the land-induced friction which causes low-level shear and can induce little spin-ups of tornadoes very quickly uh, with little warning. So do be aware that you may have to shelter in place on short notice if tornado warnings are issued. So keep an eye out for that, even if you're in some of these weaker bands uh, on the northern side. If we look at the overall character of the storm, we do see a well-defined eye here, but with only a partial eye wall currently extending from the western to northern side. It rotates around periodically. We currently have a dry slot on the southeastern side, and this is mostly symptomatic of the fact that the storm is quite large, so there's a bit of a moat here because there's a larger band, spiral band, along the outside of this, and if you try to connect this over, you can sort of envision that this is trying to form what you could try to call an outer eye wall. It's not really. It's just a really large band on the outside of the eye, but what this effectively does is it chokes the inner eye off a little bit and keeps the wind field very broad and un unable to tighten very strongly near the very center of the storm. The other thing it does is it causes erratic wobbles in the track because if you draw this outer ring here, you'll notice that the inner eye is not quite centered in the middle of that outer band. So what it ends up doing is trying to orbit around the inner edge of that outer band uh, as it moves. And what this manifests as is a stair-stepping motion. So it came up a little bit to the north earlier, now it's doing a jog to the west. It may end up doing a little bit of a stall, a little bit of a loop back north, and then another step west-southwest, something like this as it approaches the coast, generally toward uh, the west, uh, as we expect uh, the motion to be over the next day or so, and maybe even the west-southwest as it comes toward the North Carolina, South Carolina state line. So although these little wobbles do matter, they don't necessarily indicate the long-term average motion. So we'll just have to keep a close eye on how the system progresses. Given that it is now slowed down, it's beginning that stall and crawl evolution that has been forecast for the last several days. Uh, that makes it its motion a little bit fickle. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on exactly who gets the worst winds from this eye wall. It could easily be the Wilmington area uh, if the storm comes in near or just north of Cape Fear. But if it sneaks south of Cape Fear, then you strongly increase the odds of hurricane force winds in portions of South Carolina, as well as the odds of storm surge, because the surge is maximized where these winds are coming onshore on the northern side. Not so much on the back side, but if the storm comes south any, then you start bringing those onshore winds to a different part of the coastline farther southwest. So that's why we do have storm surge warnings all the way down into South Carolina, as well as hurricane warnings for that possibility. Here's the infrared satellite loop, and we have seen a nice burst of convection in the northwest side where we saw that strong eye wall, but we do have a cloud-filled eye. And given the storm size, it's very hard to tighten up again once the circulation gets this large, and it's likely to struggle uh, to do any kind of intensification. We'll keep an eye on it to see if the eye wall gets stronger, uh, but it's unlikely to undergo any significant strengthening just before landfall. Uh, if anything, it may begin to weaken a little bit uh, as it starts to upwell cooler water. We have had a buoy. Uh, off the coast of Wilmington start showing that cooling of the water. It was up near uh, 29 degrees Celsius, just under that. Uh, it's cooled a full degree Celsius in the last several hours, and that will continue cooling. So as the storm stalls, it will eventually begin to weaken as it approaches the coast. But the thing about the storm is it was never really about uh, the maximum winds. And just to put that home here, the recon plane has found weaker maximum winds today, and the Hurricane Center, based on that data, did quote-unquote down downgrade the storm to a category two with winds right now estimated about 100 miles per hour maximum. The plane has struggled to find anything over 90 the whole day today. Uh, but I want to stress that this was not a downgrade in any practical sense of the word because although strong winds are dangerous, they were never the primary danger of this storm because they're going to cause power outages regardless of whether they're over 100 or under 100. 
And the primary danger was always the storm's size because the large circulation that this has is bringing so much storm surge uh, similar to a stronger storm just because of the size that matters much more for generating the surge. In addition, the slow movement of this storm means that all this rainfall is going to be potentially catastrophic in some areas, especially near the landfall point where multiple feet of rain could fall. That has always been the most life-threatening hazard. It's not about the wind, and this storm has not been downgraded and is not less dangerous than it was two days ago. Here is the Hurricane Center official forecast showing where Florence is now. Again, you can see how expansive this wind field is already coming ashore uh, in North Carolina and will continue getting closer and the core of the hurricane force wind field will continue approaching. Again, a generally west-northwest and then west bend in the track is expected. The, the official uh, forecast brings it in uh, just north of Cape Fear and near Wilmington, but again, there could be a little bit of wiggle room here if it tries to sneak south of Cape Fear, then you increase the odds of hurricane force winds and northeast of Charleston uh, in northeastern South Carolina and also the odds of storm surge where we still have a storm surge warning as well. And again, this is crawling now really slowly. The landfall point here is uh, around noon tomorrow on this forecast and it could be a little faster, a little slower. Again, we'll just have to keep an eye on it as it comes in, but it, the bottom line is it's slow. And then a day later, uh, it's still barely inland and we're going to have rain for two to three days easy in most of the Carolinas and this is going to cause momentous potential for flash flooding and could be potentially catastrophic in places of southern North Carolina. This is the current expected rainfall over 20 inches in dark purple, 30 inch maxima expected near the area of Wilmington and just inland and most of both of these states, North and South Carolina, could see uh, major rainfall over several inches that could cause a uh, flash flood problems and then up into the mid-Atlantic states there's also potential al along the Appalachians and portions of Virginia as this track is expected to eventually bend toward the north and bring remnant rainfall after we uh, head through Sunday. So do keep an eye on this, even for inland power outages, although the winds will decrease uh, as the storm moves ashore, of course, inland power outages can still occur, and a wide swath of the southeast will be affected over the next few days. And it's going to be a long duration event, which increases the odds of power outages occurring uh, if winds persist for many, many, many hours and perhaps several days in some of these spots before tropical storm force winds subside. So that's Florence. Everyone do stay safe and heed evacuation warnings if there's still time. If you're in areas that have not yet started getting lashed by the storm and you're in an evacuation zone and haven't left yet, please do. Uh, you don't want to get stuck there uh, and no one can get to you for a couple days because the storm is moving so slow. So do heed those warnings if they've been given. Let's move on to the rest of the Atlantic where we do have other storms to discuss. We had subtropical storm Joyce form yesterday in the middle of the North Atlantic, not expected to be a threat and could dissipate in a day or two. Uh, but just to the southeast, we have Helene, which has weakened now. You can see the exposed low level center spinning here with most of the convection on the north side. This is heading north northeast and may impact the Azores where a tropical storm watch is in effect. So in a couple of days, adverse weather from Helene may occur. Uh, we also have Tropical Storm Isaac uh, just crossing into the Caribbean today. Here's the close-up shot showing the center of circulation spinning away here. Uh, moved uh, over Dominica or near Dominica earlier and most of the strongest winds were associated with the center and have already passed the islands by and there weren't any Tropical Storm Force winds observed according to the NHC so all Tropical Storm warnings have been dropped uh, but some of the worst weather uh, still may be trailing the storm in the form of all this rain uh, that has yet to come and may uh, uh, cause flash flooding concerns potentially in some of these islands so keep an eye out for that even as the storm center moves away because of the shear uh, most of the heavy weather is still behind now the circulation as it heads into the Caribbean may decay. It is under uh, this heavy shear, as I said, so again, still out of the westerly direction. Uh, this will tend to cause the circulation to struggle to stay together if it doesn't have enough convection to continue generating vorticity or spin. And so it's possible this dissipates, but it's also possible it survives. It really kind of depends. It's kind of on knife's edge right now. If there's enough of this spin left over, the shear will decrease in a couple of days in the Central Caribbean. So when this gets farther west, we may have to keep an eye on this uh, to, to hang around a bit as it gets into this part of the Caribbean. If there's still something left, uh, it may have a chance to re-strengthen later in its life. We'll have to see. Uh, right now, 
uh, NHC is calling for a weak circulation to remain and then dissipate in five days, but it's very possible this survives, so we'll keep a close eye on that. It'll be uh, something we don't know too much about until we see how it looks about here in a couple days, but regardless, there may be some rainfall that tries to spread up into the greater Antilles, and that uh, is the only impact we could reasonably expect for the moment, and we'll track it later if it becomes a threat again. Finally, we have the Gulf of Mexico, Invest 95L, a very broad, elliptically shaped area of low pressure. I don't even know if I can draw a closed low here. I'm not sure if there's westerly winds on the south side or not, but it's a very elliptical trough moving toward the west-northwest, and in general, this looks like it's running out of time over water to really develop. We might still get a closed circulation right before landfall in south Texas sometime tomorrow, so there is a chance it technically becomes a tropical depression, but it will not change the impacts of the system, which will just be wetness, rain, the potential for some flooding, uh, perhaps in some areas of Texas as the system moves ashore. So a wet couple of days coming as 95L moves west, but not a wind threat with this one. So that is the Atlantic, uh, all the storms uh, continuing to be tracked during this peak time of the hurricane season. Florence, of course, going to be with us for a long time. Everyone do stay safe. This is going to be a long couple of days. And uh, just uh, stay safe and listen to local officials for the best information for your particular location. We'll continue to track things closely. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.